for back today, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, basically polymer chain models, scaling laws, uh, and we're going to talk about uh, several different polymer uh, chain models. The freely jointed chain model, FJC, or kind of your Gaussian or ideal chain model, mathematician's model, it goes by many names. <laughs> Mathematician, can't spell. Uh, we're also going to look at the chemist model. And we're going to look at the physics, physics physicians. Physics model, or how to describe essentially the size of a polymer chain. So we're going to introduce a, kind of a new property here. Um, so when you have a polymer, you have a starting point here. Actually, I wanted to say it's green. Green is my start. <laughs> and then you have a polymer. It'll fluctuate around, and there'll be some ending point here in red. And we're going to characterize this polymer, now I'm going to use blue, from our start to finish vector, R. And we're going to create this kind of R squared value. That's going to be basically the method we use to kind of uh, characterize the size of a polymer. But I'm getting ahead of myself as usual. So um, there's a lot of key terms and definitions here. So ideal polymer, radius of gyration, again, freely jointed chain model. Um, this is a critical parameter, the, um, basically the, the Floyd parameter, alpha. Uh, real chains, excluded volume is a really key uh, but kind of confusing effect. Entropic stream, spring effect, we're going to kind of um, look at kind of the force uh, basically to elongate or compress a string and then the, penalty, the energy penalty is due to again that decrease in entropy. So um, one of the key things, again everyone knows this equation in this course, is constant battle between enthalpy and entropy. So there's a restoring force basically almost kind of like your spring equation, Hooke's law, um, that will kind of bounce your polymer back, but again, we'll get into that a little bit later on. Um, Self-avoiding random walks, mathematicians, ideal chain model, physicists, exactly. So before we get started, again, let's kind of uh, do a little bit of a brief um, reminder. So we made a distinction between architecture and confirmation in PSET uh, number one and in your uh, actual PSET and your lecture one, <laughs> number one uh, materials. So architecture is the structure of a polymer, but the chain confirmation is the instantaneous state. Uh, of a polymer. Uh, and that state, that confirmation can change depending on an, any external um, stimuli. So you could kind of think of external stimuli as temperature, pH, um, stress, force, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, if you have uh, the flexibility of a chain uh, or the kind of the ability to kind of adopt and you know, uh, adapt different confirmation is going to depend on your backbone structure of your polymer chain. So just like we saw in the PSET, this polymer chain is going to be much more flexible because of those single carbon-carbon bonds than uh, this polymer. Oh, kind of this backbone here, and maybe just a bit of CO. You get the picture. So much more rigid, much less flexible. It's going to affect your glass transition temperature. Um, so it is going to kind of change, uh, basically change the conformations of the polymer and uh, additionally, basically the size of your polymer. So it's going to change the effective size depending on kind of a lot of these, um, that chemical structure in there. So uh, depending on that external stimuli, like temperature, solvent, quality, I should have mentioned that, solvent, uh, you, your chain can be either extremely, extremely coiled, uh, kind of just your normal random coil configuration, or it can be highly extended. So again, this would be kind of, this is a high entropy state. Both of these are very low entropy states. So we need to kind of explain uh, this drop in entropy is not good energetically, as this fundamental equation denotes. So we need to kind of explain or figure out what's happening here to compensate for this decrease here, because we want that delta G to be as low as possible. So um, we want to kind of see, uh, you know, again, what can cause that polymer to kind of fluctuate? So before we get into kind of characterizing polymer size, I just want to show a brief uh, video quickly. Uh, so let's go to our Canvas site. Excuse me for the right here, not having this extremely ready, but we'll go on our Canvas site. So if you download, uh, you know, we go to our files. If we download our lecture notes in that PowerPoint for lecture three, Let's download this. We'll see an embedded video uh, for a polymer chain. And hopefully this plays. <laughs> now, enable editing. Here we go. 
So this is a video of a polymer. Uh, you can see the fluctuation occurring. here. Different conformations. So this is just a polymer in solution, and you can see the conformations adapting. It's constantly in flux. Um, so I really like this video to kind of show that you know these polymers are you know dynamic materials. Uh, so they're not static at all, and it leads us to kind of this question of if a polymer chain is continuously fluctuating, one of the key kind of parameters that we want to kind of describe from a polymer is the size. So if the size is constantly fluctuating, uh, we know how to kind of calculate the molecular mass, but the size of a polymer is important too. Whether it's in that coiled state, whether it's in the fully extended state, or in kind of your random coil state, that's going to change a lot of the, you know, your properties of your material. Kevlar, for instance, needs to be kind of highly extended. Um, in order to kind of achieve those, you know, really nice stacking and those different properties, or we want to be able to describe polymers. But if the, if we're dealing with dynamic materials and the size, as you can see here, the end-to-end -end distance, the distance from one end of the chain to the other end of the chain is continuously fluctuating in time. How are we going to kind of describe that? Well, that's where we're going to bring in a parameter called the root mean squared end-to-end -end distance. Uh, this one right here. So... More on this uh, in the next video. So look forward to it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. And thanks. Bye.